Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is a supernova that's basically going off in real time. This is our best simulation we have in Universe Starbucks Square that demonstrates to you what it might be like very very close to a star that goes supernova. Now unfortunately this is actually not a very realistic representation, so today we're actually going to take a look at what scientists have been able to simulate using supercomputers and talk a little bit more about the details of what's happening right there in the middle. And so here is actually another supernova from a distance, uh, if you were to look at it from the outside of the galaxy. It sort of happens and lasts uh, for something like 40,000 years and then sort of disappears. Uh, the actual nebula will disappear in a few thousand years. Now what I really wanted to focus on is actually what happens at the center in those microseconds right before the star actually explodes. And to do this, we're going to be using a video um, that was published by European scientists from the Max Planck Institute of Astrophysics back in 2013. And they actually have a paper that uh, goes along with it as well. Now, this is actually what it starts as. And what you see right here is essentially the star itself. Now, this used to be a very, very big star, probably eight or more masses of our sun. And then as the core becomes more and more unstable and as the star itself sort of starts losing the ability to hold itself together, uh, it reaches a point where the core collapses and creates this little bubble. So um, actually the, the core itself, the inner core is right here. It's, it's this uh, part right here that usually becomes white dwarfs, neutron stars or black holes. And this is the outer shell of the st uh, star that collapses onto it. So the total distance here is just under 200 kilometers. And the time for all of this happening is right here. This is in milliseconds. Now, just watch what happens first. And I'm going to explain to you uh, when I play it the second time what's really happening. So you can see it kind of expands a little bit at first and then things start happening. So I'm just going to play this just to show it to you first. All right, well, that's kind of 392 milliseconds, and this is as far as we'll go here because we don't really know what happens afterwards. Um, first of all, a lot of this was actually simulated by uh, using a supercomputer in Europe, and uh, this used something like 1600, oh no, sorry, 16,000 uh, different processors. I have like five Raspberry Pis lying around, so maybe I'll try this myself, but it will probably take me at least 400 years to complete this. Um, now, after this, we don't really know how the actual explosion occurs. We haven't really analyzed the details yet, but this is right before the actual supernova and the uh, creation of the neutron star or a black hole. Uh, so let's go back a little bit so I can actually explain to you what really happens after around this point. Um, and let's actually discuss this in a little bit more detail because this is really the most realistic simulation of what happens um, in the center of the star right before it basically goes supernova. And you can see that it all begins with this little ripple in the perfect sphere. So basically a simple, a very, very uh, tiny disruption suddenly creates this huge slushing of waves. Now the red stuff you see is the gas and the blue stuff are the shock waves that propagate through this environment. And you can see it, it becomes so crazy and so active and very, very fast. Now, remember, this is 200 kilometers and this is not even uh, half a second long. And see how fast it's all moving? It's moving very, very close to the speed of light. It's creating tremendously highly kinetic um, energy here. And it's basically generating a lot and a lot of energy. And this event uh, has a name. This is called Standing Accretion Shock Instability, also known as SASI. Um, this is basically the event that occurs right before the explosion. Now, we haven't really seen these in real life yet because 
For us to see all of this, uh, we need to actually uh, witness a very large star uh, going supernova relatively close to us, like within a few hundred thousand light years. But uh, the only explosions, the only supernova we've seen so far are really far away, like millions and billions of light years away. So we can't really see their core, unfortunately. And with the amount of energy that you actually see being released uh, right here, um, this actually often results in uh, the actual core being thrown off in a direction somewhere, uh, going really, really fast. And uh, the supernova that follows actually ends up throwing off uh, the partner star if there is one. So normally, right after this event, this is when things start moving really fast in a certain direction. As a matter of fact, it can be such a powerful um, amount of energy that this core might actually reach velocities that will require it to escape its parent galaxy. And so many neutron stars and many pulsars and many black holes are probably moving at very high velocities of hundreds and thousands of kilometers per second uh, right after this event. Now, what is interesting about this is that, like I said before, we don't really know what happens right after this. But you can kind of see that as this core becomes more and more small in, in volume and in size, um, a single ripple, an, an extra ripple here, would probably create such a tremendous amount of energy that all of this just kind of falls apart and explodes. So this is what we think might happen. We don't really know because we don't have exact simulations for this particular part of the event. But all of this, this entire event, uh, the simulation of this event, that is, took almost five months to complete on one of the most powerful supercomputers in Europe. So what you see actually took scientists like five months of processing. And if you actually want to see what kind of a supercomputer they used, here they are. This one is called Curry. This uh, actually has a lot more than 16,000 processes, but only 16,000 were used. And here we have something known as Super MUC. Uh, this has, I believe, 155,000 processors. And uh, once again, only 16,000 were actually used in total. So um, this relatively short video that doesn't really seem that impressive took quite a lot of computational power. And honestly, when you go back to Universe Sandbox, and take a look at this particular supernova happening in the game, you kind of start thinking, well, this is a pretty impressive game to begin with, because honestly, if it can actually simulate at least part of the supernova that took like 16,000 processors to simulate um, for the scientists, it really puts things into perspective. Okay, yeah, it's not as realistic as this, but you know, it does look more, more pretty here. So if you are going for visual effects, Universe Sandbox. Go get it in the link in the description below. Anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to really show you what happens right there in the middle that we don't actually see in Universe Sandbox. We get to see the other beautiful effects, but just not the center. Hopefully you now know a little bit more about Supernova and the crazy unusual effects inside of them um, right before the explosion. And hopefully you now understand how incredibly powerful and how incredibly strange some phenomena are uh, in our universe. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.